So our next presenter is Kimberly Fakey. Kimberly is a PhD student in human paleobiology. Kimberly's presentation is entitled Nitrogen, Neanderthals, and Seeing Diet in the Past. You and I and every person we know are modern humans, homo sapiens. But many thousands of years ago, we didn't exist. Other species of humans, our ancestors, did. We've evolved as a result of millions of years of evolution and many varieties of humans. You've maybe heard of one of them, the Neanderthals. Neanderthals were our evolutionary cousins, but they're now extinct. We know what they looked like because we have some of their bones and their DNA. But how did they behave and live? I'm interested in learning about what they ate, and we can do that using chemistry. There is a special and rare type of the element nitrogen that exists on Earth called nitrogen-15. Nitrogen-15 becomes concentrated in animals as it moves up the food chain because it's retained in the body while other types of nitrogen are expelled. Scientists notice that the more meat you eat, the more nitrogen-15 you have in your body. Carnivores, who eat only meat, have the highest amount of nitrogen-15. When we look at nitrogen-15 in fossils, we see that Neanderthals have even more nitrogen-15 than carnivores, like hyenas. How does that make any sense? Archaeology also tells us that Neanderthals were eating a lot of plants. So why are Neanderthals so high in nitrogen-15? Maybe there's something about this chemical method that we're not considering. So I wondered if maybe Neanderthals were doing something to their food that would cause the amount of nitrogen-15 in that food to increase. Unfortunately for us, most behavior doesn't fossilize along with bones. So to understand the impact of food processing on nitrogen-15, I have to use an experimental approach instead. I process food items in many different ways like roasting and wood smoking, and use sensitive chemical instrumentation to measure the amount of nitrogen-15 before and after. So I can then use that data to build a computer model that predicts the effect of these behaviors on nitrogen-15 values that Neanderthals might have. And the model allows me to test whether the values we see in Neanderthals could have been caused by processing their food in certain ways. Spoiler alert, looks like they could. So we study the past to better understand ourselves and where we came from. Since we don't have a time machine, our interpretation of the past is reliant on our methods and is only as good as our methods. So experimental studies like mine help us to understand what can affect our data and can help us understand this piece of our evolutionary past. Thank you.